All right then, so the form is starting to take shape. Next, we need to do a date picker to go down here to say when you'd like this person's services. So let's go now underneath this input field and do a third input field. So div.input-field and make sure you spell these things correctly and tab on, okay? And inside this input field, first of all, we want an input and that type is gonna be text. Now, you might think that this should be of type date, but when we're working with materialize, materialize takes care of all of this for us and we don't need to use the inbuilt type equals date input field. It's always type equals text for it. So we'll give this an ID and set that equal to date. And we'll also give this a class and set that equal to date picker. All right, so now this ID, again, you can use whatever you want. I'm using date because it makes sense. Uh, this class date picker materialize will use. All right, so underneath that, we'll do our label. And in here, we need that for the date, which matches up to the ID. And we'll say inside the label, choose a date you need me for. All right, so that's pretty much it HTML wise. So let's go over here and take a look at this. Now, if we click it at the minute, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't open up a date pop up. But if we now initialize this down in the JavaScript, which is what we're gonna do, then it should work. So what we'll do is look for the date picker. Remember that was the class that we gave to it. And we'll say dot date picker as the function. Now this function right here, this takes in an object as a parameter. And this object will contain different options about how the date picker is gonna work. Now we won't place any options in there at the minute. I'll show you that in a second. Let's just preview this to see if it works so far. So now choose a date you need me for. When we click on it now, because we have that JavaScript hooked up, it populates this box over here. So we can choose our different months and we can choose a date. And then as soon as we do that and press OK, then it's gonna populate right here. And that, my friends, is freaking awesome. Okay, very little work and a cool looking date picker. Now, if we click over here, we can select the months. And if we click over here, we can select all of the different years. Now, what if, for example, we want to add some options? I showed you over here, we could add options. Well, yeah, we can do that. If I'm a photographer, I might not want to work weekends. So when someone comes to try and book a date, I might not want them to select weekends. So I could pass in an option right here called disable and then weekends and set that to true. So if I save this now and preview over here, then we can see these things are grayed out Sunday or Saturday and Sunday, and I can't pick them, but I can pick everything else still. So that's pretty good, right? And there's more options as well. And if you wanna read about all the different options, I would check out the documentation for this. I'll leave the link to the exact page that you need to read so you can try some of them out yourself. Okay, so moving on then, next thing we need to do is a couple of different input fields to ask the user which services they actually require. Is it editing or is it photography? So let's go back up here to where we closed off the last input field and then we'll create another div with a class of input hyphen field. Now inside here, I'm gonna do a P tag first of all and say services required like so dot 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 so the user can choose some of these services. Now, to create these checkboxes, what we'll do is place each one inside a P tag. Now, inside this P tag, they're gonna be a label. And by the way, that's so that each element goes on a new line, okay? So inside this label, what we'll do is take off the four. We don't need to give this a four because it's surrounding the entire input here. And we'll do an input inside it, which will say type checkbox. Then underneath the checkbox, we'll do a span, which is gonna sit next to it, and that will be photography. Okay, so that's how we create a checkbox. If we copy that and paste it down below, it's gonna do another one for us. Just scoot it back a bit. And this one is gonna say editing. So now we have inside one input field, some P tags so that each input box goes onto the next line a label inside each one, which is surrounding the input itself and the text next to the input. 
So if we save this, check this out in the browser, now we can see these things right here and if we tick it, we get that cool little animation and the tick as well. So the last thing we need inside this form is a button. So let's go behind that or below that, do a div with a class of input hyphen field. And inside that div, we'll do a button with a class of BTN and then say submit inside that. So if we save that now and view that in the browser, it looks pretty good, but let's just centralize that by saying center in the surrounding wrapper and that should center the button, awesome. So there we go, my friends, that is our form now complete. And in the next video, we can move on and start to work on the footer.